Hello and welcome to one more edition of Tamil Lectures. Today we will continue our chapter of chapter four, which is share capital and debentures. In this lecture, our focus point will be on section forty-seven, which would speak about voting rights of members. I have already explained the types of voting which can happen in a general meeting. Please do check out those videos from section one zero six to section one one zero, which are already available on my channel. First of all, today. we will speak only about the voting rights which are there of the members of equity shareholders and preference shareholders and what would be the proportion of the same so there are three topics that are addressed or governed by section 47 the first topic is voting right of a member holding equity share capital of a member holding equity share capital the second one is voting right of a member holding preference share capital we have already seen the difference between equity share capital and preference share capital under section 43 which i have already uploaded on my channel you can first look at what is equity share capital and what is preference share capital and then only understand what are the voting rights okay so the third point that we are going to learn is what will be the proportion in under which the voting rights will be available to the members is it like what we vote for our government where we get one vote one person or there is some other calculation which is involved that is the points that we are going to learn in this lecture so i am your host and teacher santosh baliga without wasting any time let's get started the voting right of members holding equity shares is the first topic that we will address today what is the voting right of member holding equity share capital we all know that equity share capital members have the maximum voting right or the maximum say in the management of the company every big business decision which is taken in the company has to go through the wisdom of the equity shareholders also i had explained to you that equity share capital is of two types one is plain vanilla voting rights and the other one is differential voting rights here we are speaking about plain vanilla voting rights equity shares which have full voting rights available to them so every member of a company limited by shares every member of a company limited by shares and holding equity share capital and holding equity share capital shall have a right to vote it is his right to vote on every resolution which is placed before the company so each and every resolution which is placed before the general meeting see because shareholders meeting is known as general meeting and every resolution which is proposed and placed in the general meeting will be coming up for the voting by members which members equity shareholders okay this part is clear so every resolution placed before the company the shareholder that is the equity shareholder will have a right to vote the second point is his voting right on poll shall be in proportion to his share in the paid up share capital equity share capital of the company what do you mean by this this means that his voting right will be proportionate to his share in the paid up share capital of the company which means if he is holding say 1 lakh shares out of 1 crore shares which the company's total paid up capital is consisting of then his share his voting right his voting share will be 1% since 1 lakh shares he is having out of 1 crore shares so this comes to 1% so he would be having 1% voting rights in every resolution which is placed before the company so the voting right of a equity shareholder proportionate to his share in the paid up equity share capital of the company so i hope this point is also clear to you now let us move to this is this was limited to equity share shareholders now we move to preference shareholders we all know that preference shareholders do not have the same privileges like equity shareholders when it comes to voting rights but they get preference in terms of dividend that is, that is payable to them which may be on a fixed amount or fixed rate and per repayment in terms of in times of winding up or repayment of capital 
so they get a preference on in the, on those parameters but in terms of voting rights do they get the same preference as an uh, equity shareholder the answer is no so but they do have some voting rights those voting rights would be it would such preference shareholders would have right to vote only when mark my words very very carefully only when his rights are directly affected by such a resolution which is going to be passed in the company so the right to vote on resolutions placed which directly affect rights attached to preference shares this is the first point this is where preference shareholders can vote second second point is any resolution any resolution for winding up of the company any resolution for winding up of the company or for repayment or reduction of equity or preference share capital of the company this is the third point so there are three points where a preference share holder also will have a right to vote first if it directly affects him if it directly affects him or his rights second for a resolution which is relating to winding up of the company third in case of repayment or reduction of equity or preference share capital now in case of preference share capital holders also the voting right will be in proportion to the paid up preference share capital of the company okay so i hope this point is also clear to you in proportion to the paid up preference share capital of the company now the last point is about proportion of voting rights and proportion of voting rights as i have already explained to you in both the scenarios will be proportional to the paid up capital of class of the shares of the company so it will be proportional to the paid up capital of class of shares involved so that means to answer a question that does one person have one vote no that particular universal principle or universal franchise or adult franchise which is used in choosing or election for governments are not applicable in case of voting in an company for a particular resolution so it will be proportional to the paid up share capital of the class of shares involved okay so one person one vote will not be applicable i hope this much is clear now in case of equity share capital there is an exemption given to nidhi companies there is an exemption given to nidhi company do you know what is nidhi company nidhi company is a company which is incorporated between a small group of persons to encourage thrift of savings between them and lending is also done between the same uh, same group of members this is covered under section 406 and under your syllabus it is covered under types of companies now if you want me to prepare videos on types of companies and the first chapter also please do comment in the comment section of this particular video i will try to make those videos also available for all of you okay now coming back to the point exemption is for nidhi companies exemption is for nidhi companies what is the exemption exemption is that the exercising of voting rights will be limited to each person to a maximum of to a maximum of 5% to maximum of 5% of total voting power of total voting rights of equity shareholders so this is an exemption which is given this is important from case study point of view and understand that it is applicable only for nidhi company and it will not give you access of 5% of total voting rights of equity shareholders i hope this part is clear now there is a with regards to the voting rights of preference shareholders there is a very unique and interesting point that i have kept for the last what is this interesting point is that where the dividend of class of preference shares has not been paid for dividend is uh, fixed for preference shareholders if it is not paid for to the preference shareholders and it is due and in arrears for a period of 2 years or more for a period of 2 years or more then in that case the class of preference shareholders 
shall have a right to vote on all the resolutions placed before the company so the preference holder in case they have been not paid the dividend agreed to for a period of 2 years or more in that case they will assume the same voting power they will assume the same voting rights as is available to the equity share capital holders because equity share capital holders have a right to vote on all the resolutions placed before the company similar right will now be available to preference shareholders also okay i hope this point is also clear to this is a very very important point very very important point from case study point of view if a case study comes on section 47 this point will 100% guaranteed will be there in that particular question okay i hope this is clear now let us move forward to section 47 will not be applicable will not be applicable to private companies it will not be applicable to private companies if such private companies if such private companies have made a provision have made a provision in in what in memorandum of association or articles of association of such private company involved okay i hope this is clear to all of you now this exemption is applicable only if is applicable only if such private company has not committed a default has not committed a default in what in two conditions one filing of financial statements under section 137 i am going to take you through section 137 in detail in a separate video which will come very soon on this channel so stay tuned for that but currently if the company which is a private company has not committed a default in filing of financial statement or filing of filing of annual return under section 92 with roc this also i have covered in one of my videos that is my first video of this particular channel okay so do check that particular video so if the private company has not committed default in filing of financial statement and filing of annual return then the exemption can be availed by the private company if they make the provision in the memorandum of association or articles of association so i hope this particular provision is clear to all of you what let us let us just recap it for the summary purpose uh, in, from this particular chart which is given in your ica module itself so voting rights for equity share capital and for preference shares are different in case of equity shares it is a right to vote right to right to vote is available on every resolution placed before the company so normally it is in proportion of paid up capital but in case of differential voting rights it will be as defined as per the terms of issue differential voting rights dvrs i have already covered in my last lecture please go and check that particular video for conceptual clarity on dvrs and the conditions of dvrs that we had discussed so in case of dvrs it will be depending on the terms of the issue but in terms of normal plain vanilla plain vanilla equity shares it will be in proportion to the paid up capital now as far as preference share capital preference shares is concerned it will be in proportion to the paid up capital and if the dividend is not paid then it will be same as same as what same as preference share capital same as sorry equity share capital holders that will be they will have a right to vote on every resolution which is placed in the general meeting till the default is made good by the company that means the dividend is paid the arrears of dividend is paid once the arrears of dividend is paid they will again have the same rights as a normal preference shareholders and second point is in case of winding up third point is in case of directly affecting the interest of the interest of the preference share capital or preference share capital holders and in case of repayment of or reduction of share capital so that point is not covered over here in case of repayment or reduction of equity share capital or preference share capital also the preference holders will have a right to vote on those matters also okay i hope this whole topic is clear to you 
and you have understood everything if you have understood everything and you have enjoyed this lecture please do press the like button and share it to your friends and your groups to the maximum and if you have not yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel as i am going to cover the whole of ca inter and it is also also applicable to cs executive students your likes and subscription do keep me motivated for bringing more videos so thanks a lot